G'day. Has Drive to Survive run its course? Well, we'll know in a couple of weeks when Series 6 airs on Netflix. My gut feel though is that there's still plenty of interest from old and new fans for it to be an important part of F1's push to grow the sport. What has made this series such huge success? Well, I think two characters, Daniel Ricciardo and Gunther Steiner, have played a very big part. Both are super performers on screen. Daniel, we were lucky to get back last year, as you'll well remember. For anyone who thought I left, I never left. And Gunther, we are going to lose in 2024, unless, of course, he ends up getting a gig, perhaps, with Drive to Survive, which is not totally out of the question. But if we don't get to see Gunther again, I think that may well give this series a bit of a push, because people love to see his candid responses, yes, his language, and his honesty. He's definitely the most colourful team principal that I've ever seen in Formula One. What were the ratings like in 2023? The fifth season premiered in February last year and had 570,000 viewers over its first week. Was that a jump on the previous year? You bet. It was up 40%. That is big. But is there any evidence that this show has actually brought people to the sport? We'll have a look at this. A poll taken in March 2022 of 1,900 self-identified adult US F1 fans showed that 53% credited the series Drive to Survive as a reason they became viewers of F1 races. It's been great advertising for Formula One, and advertising normally costs a business money. F1 is actually paid by the producer of this series for their access and F1 gets the new fans for free. A Nielsen study showed that there were about 45 million American F1 fans in 2019, but that grew to over 49 million in 2022. This at a time that many sports were losing followers. That you're watching this video now suggests that you've probably seen some episodes, if not all, of Drive to Survive. Did you know that it won an Emmy in 2022 for an outstanding documentary series? So what can we expect to see in this year's series? Well, certainly the return of Daniel Ricciardo will be a major episode. He was gone for the first half of the year, but I can tell you that that Hungary race episode will be super as we'll see him returning to the game. And I remember seeing the Drive to Survive crew all over him that weekend. And it's odds on you'll see content from this press conference in the Red Bull Energy Station that took place on the Thursday, the media day, of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Last year, F1 gave Box to Box Films a two-year extension of their contract to continue producing the series, which originally was green-lighted by Sean Bratches in 2017. Sean came from ESPN, he lasted a couple of years in Formula One, and then he went to live golf. I don't think he's there anymore though, but I do know that Sean rates it as his single biggest achievement. I hope you got a bonus for that decision. How does the filming work at the track? Well, there are two or three crews at each race. Some of those crews will be embedded, meaning they are wearing team kit, they're with Ferrari or Alpha Tauri for that whole weekend. Yes, they can go and shoot anything they want, but they get special access to those teams that they're embedded with. And typically there'll be a camera operator, an audio operator, and a producer in each team. And from watching the series, you'll know that they get access to drivers and team principals away from the track, and that's pretty important. But there's no guarantee that even if a crew spends a day or two with the driver, that that content will actually make the final cut. I did speak to one driver's manager who told me that he was quite frustrated by the process because the crew had spent some time and none of that content ever made it to the final cut. Last year, I do know that one of the crews spent some time with Pierre Gasly away from the track, so I'll be keen to see whether any of that content makes the cut this year. But what is the Drive to Survive brief? It's to introduce the sport to new fans and at the same time, fire up enthusiasm with old fans to make sure they keep watching the series and are invested in the sport. Has it worked? I think there's no doubt. My experience in the paddock is that to the paddock these days, compared with say 2017, is remarkably busier. The drivers are now treated more like rock stars than sports athletes. And it's getting to a point now where more drivers are going to need security just to get in and out of the track and even move around the paddock. I imagine in the first episode, we'll see plenty of vision from the on-track shoot in Bahrain, which took place on the first day of testing last year. This is the first time that all the 2024 drivers and the cars are gathered together on track and it's just for Drive to Survive. Now we can shoot photography wise, no problem at all. And in previous years, we've been able to shoot from just behind where their main camera position is on the track. 
But last year, they said no, we had to go behind the fence. Once the cars are on the track and all the drivers standing next to them, there'll be a photo shoot, and it's normally someone from Getty Images shooting from a ladder. Once that's done, video takes over, and what we often see is drivers walking up from the back of the grid to the front. The drivers at that point are directed by a crew member with a loud hailer, and on that walk through the lineup of cars, the drivers are told to look super serious. Although Daniel Ricciardo couldn't help himself in 2021 with this grin. Box to Box Films is the company that produces this show. They are no strangers to this sort of content. They're an independent company that's also focused on tennis and golf. I really love the golf series, but didn't get into the tennis one. But they pretty much own this type of documentary. And with Formula One, they have unequaled access at the track and access to F1's vision, because F1 is the sole provider of the content that goes out to all the broadcasters on the telecast, and they can use any of that in the series. Now under Bernie Eccleston, we rarely got to see inside the engineers' rooms, the drivers' homes, see the boats and cars, and certainly content like this would never have been allowed. He does not f smash my door, tell him that. I don't know where he is, but he can f off, I told him, both of them. And Drive to Survive's coverage of all this, I think has been the main reason for its enormous success. Access is king. And of course, it's beautifully shot and edited. I want to talk a little bit about the audio side of things because it is so important. When you see Sky stuff and they're following drivers, they might have a microphone on top of the camera. But with Drive to Survive, there is a dedicated audio engineer and he or she, and they do have a, a few female audio engineers, uh, will be having radio mics and overhead boom mics. Not all the drivers are happy about this. And I remember seeing Pierre Gasly swatting away a microphone in Qatar in 2021. And that's not the only driver to do that. On the subject of radio mics, I remember last year having a chat with a fellow photographer. And I didn't realize for the first couple of minutes of my chat that he was indeed mic'd up and that there was a Drive to Survive crew just behind recording it. So I hope I've said nothing that's gonna get me in trouble there. And does anyone have any right to say, I don't want that to go to air? Well, certainly team principals could ask, um, but my understanding is Drive to Survive has complete carte blanche. They can do whatever they want. Of course, if they went and aired something that really peeved a team, they may find a number of their requests in the future declined by that team. So it's a commercial decision as to whether you run with it or whether you take it out. Still on the subject of audio, yes, they use Sky commentators David Croft and Martin Brundle, but they also go and overdub their commentary in many instances. The interviews with drivers and the pieces to camera that say Will Buxton does, uh, often done at the track in a separate room or away from the track at a hotel and all the drivers are required to attend. Still on audio, you may not have noticed, but there is a fair amount of sweetening done in post-production. By sweetening, I mean the addition of sound effects, uh, crash sounds, screeching, etc. That's a standard for uh, a lot of television series and movies, and it adds a bit of excitement to it. One aspect you may not have thought about is uh, how discreet these crew members need to be of Drive to Survive. Often they're in meetings, they hear stuff, and remember, with those radio microphones, often you forget that you're on mic and you might say something that is commercially sensitive. So all of the DTS crew need to be very careful about what they say and to whom. F1's been trying to crack the US market for decades now, and certainly Drive to Survive has made big inroads for them in that market. Season four was the most watched Netflix series in 33 countries, including the US, more than a third of the spectators in Austin in 2022 mentioned Drive to Survive in an on-site survey about why they decided to attend. And what makes this series any better than perhaps past efforts? Well, definitely the human side, the emotion of Formula One, the drama, the behind the scenes footage of team meetings. The other thing is nothing is scripted, but of course the producer may push them in the right direction. Nice to get your thoughts on the Miami race, Max. Speaking of Max, was he sat out season 2021, but he returned in 2022, and he'll be seen in series six. Although I've got to say, Max plays it pretty straight. He is, he's no Daniel, he is no Gunter Steiner, but he is the world champion. Why are all episodes released on the same day and just prior to the start of the new season? That's to appease F1's broadcast partners. They pay millions of dollars to show the races, and they certainly don't want to be competing with Drive to survive during the season. But I think they're more than happy to take in those extra viewers who come across to their broadcast as a result of people watching the documentary. I interviewed Pato O'Ward going back 18 months ago in Abu Dhabi, and he hit the nail on the head. You know, we're in entertainment, right? 
We're there to entertain. All teams get that now, and they know the power of being featured in the documentary. Some obviously get more exposure than others. Team sponsors also love the show because their logo is being broadcast to another audience at effectively no extra cost. Of course, every TV show or movie needs a star. And without a doubt, the star of Drive to Survive is Gunther Steiner. And as I mentioned earlier, this will probably be our last year of seeing Gunther. Now, I will be disappointed about that. He is very much a cult figure. And was that one of the reasons why Haas let him go? I believe yes, although the performance of the team was probably a bigger issue. I also think Drive to Survive had a very big part to play in the two movie projects that were being filmed last year and this year. If you're in the paddock, keep a lookout for the Drive to Survive crew. They're typically the only crew with an audio engineer. You'll often see them hanging around the car park with the likes of me waiting for drivers to arrive and leave. And they'll typically be walking backwards with a camera in a driver's face. Is that frustrating for us as photographers? Yeah, because we mainly use longer lenses, but they use wider lenses. And as such, they need to be certainly within a meter of a driver to get the vision they want. That said, the crews will be back in 2024, filming another 10 episodes for airing in 2025. In the meantime, I await with much anticipation the release of Series 6 later this month. Will you be watching? I hope so. Uh, now, please hit the subscribe button. Some of you aren't subscribed. Like the video too, that helps. Thank you very much in advance. And you can click here to see some excellent stuff. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. That is big. Yes, it is big.